Hello, my name is Bob Newman. I'm the Chief Business Officer at Immunomic Therapeutics. Thank you to the bio organization for the opportunity to present. I'm here to talk to you about a very exciting technology that we think is unique in the nucleic acid vaccine space. Our primary reason for being here is to open conversations on both the partnering and collaboration front and on a financing front. Of course, I'll be making forward-looking statements, so here is our safe harbor statement. Immunoic Therapeutics, or ITI, is a Rockville, Maryland-based company primarily focused on the immuno-oncology therapeutic vaccine space. We are exploiting our proprietary lamp-mediated platform to tackle a variety of diseases via multiple modalities. We believe that what makes us unique is our demonstrated ability to elicit a complete immune response, including long-term memory in a variety of disease states. Let me give you some more detail. ITI has been around since 2006, but we started life utilize, utilizing our technology to tackle the allergy space. We monetized that portfolio with an over $300 million upfront cash deal with Estellas in 2015 that certainly validates the power of the technology. That sale has been one of our primary sources of funds for the last six years as we have reinvented ourselves in the immuno-oncology space. We now have a rapidly growing clinical stage pipeline, and we have near-term readout on what could be a transformative phase two clinical study in glioblastoma. Our people and our capabilities are second to none for a company our size, and we're excited about our various near-term catalysts. So just what is LAMP? What does it do? And how does it enable us to stand out from our competition? Let's start by taking a look at what may be considered the typical vaccine approach. The gold standard is defined by the generation of a cytotoxic T cell response via MHC1 presentation. This is good, but if there is one thing the pandemic has taught us, it's that the lack of long-term memory and a limited immune response leaves us vulnerable. This is particularly true with cancer where a more fully realized immune response is likely to be critical if we wanna have a significant impact on survival in many instances. LAMP-mediated vaccination is fundamentally different from other approaches. Lysosomes are vesicles that receive antigens to be processed for MHC2 presentation. LAMP, or lysosomal associated membrane protein, refers to a class of proteins found in the lysosomal membrane. Our scientific founder, Dr. Tom August at Johns Hopkins University, discovered that by inserting the coding sequence to an antigenic target into the LAMP gene, one could effectively deliver the resulting protein sequence directly to the MHC2 complex and maturing lysosomes for presentation to CD4 positive T cells. This is the only mechanism known for delivering antigens directly to the MHC2 complex. Helper T cell activation is achieved while enhancing CD8 positive presentation. We believe our technology is unique in this regard and we have abundant evidence to support this mechanism of action. It is the MHC2 presentation via LAMP that results in a fully realized immune response and enables us to effectively target a variety of indications from allergy to infectious disease to cancer via a variety of modalities, including plasmid DNA vaccines, self-amplifying self RNA and dendritic cell vaccines for cell therapy. And we have ongoing development programs in each of these. When you combine the power of this technology with various approaches, depending on the target indication, you create an opportunity to produce products in an almost industrial way by inserting the antigen sequence of choice into the LAMP construct. We are working with a variety of collaborators, both academic and corporate, to advance the platform. From a pipeline perspective, these are our most advanced product candidates. They range from a large late phase two placebo-controlled study in glioblastoma utilizing a cell therapy approach that I will go into in some detail to an as yet to be described program in the antibody discovery space and include what we believe could be a blockbuster in the Japanese red cedar polynosis space. The white rows represent those products that are or will be in the clinic this year. A little more detail on our lead product, ITI 1000 and our phase two glioblastoma trial. 
GBM is one of the most challenging targets in the oncology space, and though it impacts a relatively small number of people, it's a disease in desperate need of new therapeutic approaches. There has been nothing new approved in almost 20 years. We have compelling data from three phase one studies that we are cautiously optimistic we will replicate in a soon to complete large placebo controlled phase two study, and we believe we are on the cusp of something special. Note the 25 to 35 percent five year survival figure compared to historical controls of under 7 percent. These are the survival curves from one of the three phase one trials completed by John Sampson's team at Duke. Overall survival in this study showed a median of over 40 months versus historical controls of approximately 14 to 16 months. This data has been replicated in two additional phase one studies, including one with a placebo control as described in the publication on the right. I'm not sure how familiar some of you are with the nature of this particular disease, but these results are unprecedented. Here's a schematic of the ongoing phase two attack two study being led by Dr. Dwayne Mitchell at University of Florida and Dr. Sampson at Duke University. This blinded placebo controlled study is being conducted in newly diagnosed GBM patients who have undergone a definitive surgical resection and have successfully completed their first course of standard of care chemo radiation. As you can see, it is randomized two to one test article to placebo. The primary endpoint is overall survival with secondary endpoints of change in progression, free survival, and immunological responses. The trial is almost fully enrolled and at 150 patients represents one of the larger phase two studies in this space. Of course, we recognize that given the dismal outcome of most every approach tested in this disease, prospective partners are gonna adopt a wait and see approach. We expect to have preliminary readout on this study by early Q2 and a final report later in the year. There is some discussion of whether a result anywhere close to the data from the phase one experience wouldn't open the door for an accelerated approval given the dramatic need for new therapies to treat this disease. At the very least, we anticipate initiating phase three testing by the end of 2022, and we're in the midst of preparing for that study. We've also recently initiated an additional phase two study investigating the utility of ITI-1000 in patients who are apheresed following their initial chemo radiation treatment. Our market research supports a somewhat conservative estimate of peak sales in the $500 to $600 million range, and more importantly, could represent a game changer in the treatment of this disease. Now let me introduce our second clinical candidate. ITI-3000 is a plasmid DNA vaccine. We filed an IND in December of last year and our phase one trial will begin before mid-year. ITI-3000 is for the treatment of Merkel cell carcinoma. Merkel cell carcinoma is a rare type of skin cancer that is very aggressive and there are limited treatment options that offer both extended disease-free survival and low toxicity. The vast majority of these cases are associated with Merkel cell polyoma virus infection. ITI-3000 is a plasma DNA vaccine that targets this virus. It has the added benefit that it appears to synergize with PD-1 blockade, so we believe there is a significant opportunity for us in this indication, both in the adjuvant setting and potentially in first recurrence in combination with a checkpoint inhibitor. I'd be happy to share the data supporting this potential with anyone that has an interest in discussing further. Our third clinical candidate represents our only non-oncology program, but one that has enormous potential. A quick introduction to ITI-9001 for the treatment of Japanese red cedar allergy. Japanese red cedar allergy is an incredibly difficult problem in Japan, affecting up to a third of the population on an annual basis. That is over 30 million people, clearly an immense opportunity. ITI-9001 is a self-amplifying RNA vaccine targeting the Cry-J proteins 1 and 2 and delivered in a nanostructured lipid carrier. It inhibits IgE production by dramatically skewing the allergic reaction from a Th2 to a Th1 dominant response. We are in discussions with the Japanese PMDA right now and we anticipate initiating phase 1 testing late this year. We have a significant body of preclinical data supporting the mechanism of action and we have a well-considered path to a near-term approval. Currently, there are no approved and effective immunotherapies on the market, and we believe we have a potential blockbuster on our hands. In 
In a further display of the strength and diversity of our LAMP platform, we have initiated efforts in the antibody discovery space, and we're very excited about our near-term prospects. In spite of the incredible progress we as an industry have made against the vast number of diseases utilizing monoclonal antibody therapy, there remain a number of hurdles, not the least of which is the growing challenge to identify novel targets. We have evidence to suggest that utilizing our proprietary LAMP-mediated genetic immunization, we can generate a vast number of novel epitopes. As already described, the power of LAMP is that it utilizes the MHC2 pathway, and it is agnostic to antigen. It enables the immune system to do what it does naturally. We anticipate taking our first product candidate into the clinic in 2023 or early 2024. Let me turn quickly to the makeup of the company and finish with some details about upcoming milestones. We are approximately 40 people and growing fast. The senior management team has a long history of success in both private and public biopharma companies. The company is led by Dr. Bill Hurl, a scientific entrepreneur with a long history of successful company formation and building and a 100% record of positive shareholder return. I'm the newcomer to the team, but the rest have been together for at least the last five years. We have a very strong group of key scientific advisors that represent some of the best in the business, including Drew Pardall at Johns Hopkins, who is a co-inventor of the LAMP platform and one of the people responsible for the checkpoint inhibitor revolution. Our intellectual property portfolio is strong, extensive, and growing. We have a particular focus on evolving the LAMP technology to the point where we are now working on a fourth generation of the platform. And we have a number of very important milestones on the near-term near horizon that speak to the value of the company. These are highlighted by our phase two GBM readout later this year and include a number of key value driving events over the next three years. We anticipate having as many as five candidates in the clinic by the end of this year and we could be launching our GBM cell therapy ITI 1000 as early as 2024. In summary, we've built a product development engine that has the potential to deliver a variety of nucleic acid vaccine candidates focused on transforming the landscape in a number of difficult to treat indications that promise to not only deliver important breakthroughs for patients, but also to create significant shareholder value in the near term. We have been quietly going out about our business for the last few years, and now with this latest IND filing, we are initiating conversations around licensing and collaboration that will enable us to further extend the application of the platform and create further value. I wanna thank the organizers for the opportunity to present, and I look forward to hearing from any among the audience that are interested in discussing licensing opportunities for selected portfolio candidates or funding conversations.